Welcome to Stackelbeck Tonight. I'm Eric Stackelbeck, and this is the most perilous time for Israel since it was reborn as a nation in 1948. From global courts to diplomatic decrees to an Iranian-backed terror onslaught, it seems the world's one and only Jewish state is being targeted from all sides. And that's in the past week alone. Just when you thought things couldn't get any more insane, Along comes a familiar, unfriendly face to pour more gasoline on the fire. Recep Tayyip Erdogan. He's president of a NATO member nation that boasts the second largest military in that alliance behind only the United States. And yet, Erdogan is giving the Iranian regime a run for its money when it comes to unhinged anti-Israel rhetoric. On Wednesday, he called Israel, quote, a threat to all humanity, and called on the entire Islamic world to unite against the Jewish state. He then went on to slam Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as a maniac, a psychopath, and a blood-feeding vampire. Again, these remarks were made by the leader of a NATO member nation, Turkey. Yet I have not heard one Western leader condemn this vicious outburst at a time when anti-Semitism is at levels unseen since World War II, and when Israel is fighting a war for its very existence, you'd think the President of the United States, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, the President of France, someone would stand up, speak out, and hold Erdogan accountable for this open incitement against Israel. Instead, nothing. And the UN, they're too busy condemning Israel to be concerned with the anti-Israel forces like Erdogan that are becoming increasingly active and dangerous. Folks, Israel could use a few good friends right now. Here's the good news. The God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob still sits on the throne, and when it comes to his land and his people, he neither slumbers nor sleeps. Secondly, Israel does indeed have many great friends, especially right here in the United States, and we're joined by two of them today. Ilan Carr is the CEO of the Israeli American Council. He also served as the State Department's special envoy for monitoring and combating anti-Semitism under President Trump. And Pastor Dumasani Washington is the founder and CEO of the Institute for Black Solidarity with Israel. They'll break down the state of play in Israel today and why now is the time for Christians to stand up and speak out. We are here with our very special all-star Israel panel, Ilan Carr, Dumasani, Washington. Gentlemen, welcome. Ilan, I want to start with you. We've got a lot to unpack, guys. But Ilan, I want to start with you. And a good place to start, maybe a bad, bad place, would be with Recep Erdogan. Look, I haven't seen rhetoric like this, this side of the Iranian regime, and he's a NATO member. Elon, it seems like he really, his regime is becoming a vanguard of global anti-Semitism. How do you see it? Well, there's no question, Eric. It's good to be with you, and it's good to be with my friend, Pastor Dumasani Washington. No question. And look, this is what happens when American deterrence is attenuated. Yeah. We can't keep in line <clears throat> those who threaten our values and those who threaten our allies. Uh -huh. Keep in mind that President Erdogan represents, together with Qatar, an axis of the Muslim Brotherhood in the world, yeah. which is a threat to Israel, certainly, but also a threat to America and a threat to our friends in the Gulf. Right. I mean, the Arab, our Arab allies in the Gulf are as afraid of this stuff as anyone else. And then you've got the Shia, the Shia radicals, uh, led, of course, by the Islamic Republic of Iran, a, a threat to world peace. Yeah. It is absolutely essential that Israel prevail. And for Israel to prevail, the United States has to double down on those core American values and stand with our allies against this global evil. Yeah, Elon, great point about the Muslim <laughs> Brotherhood, which, by the way, look, Hamas is the self-described Palestinian branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. For sure. Absolutely. Edu Masani, speaking of which, look, we have obviously Erdogan, NATO member nation, and Europe obviously a crucial part of that alliance. Yet we have European leaders this week, Norway, Spain, Ireland, mm -hmm. declaring or unilaterally declaring, right. recognizing a Palestinian state. It seems rather tone deaf right now for the West to essentially throw Israel under the bus when we're facing a shared enemy in that Iranian axis. As has been said by many, Eric, 
for October the 7th to play out and us still dealing with that aftermath and now the Palestinians be rewarded with a state, at least in the minds of some of these nations, as you just mentioned, is an evil on top of evil, right? Not only is there not a thorough condemning, not only is there not a demanding of the hostages being released that are still being held in Gaza, they're rewarding Hamas with a state. That's, that yeah. It's just beyond dangerous about what's going on right now. Yeah, and by the way, not just Hamas, look, we have Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, Dumasani, and we have this Iranian axis on the march. Yes. Do you see the posture of the West towards this gathering threat is a bit weak overall? It is very clear that Israel's enemies are gaining strength and momentum based largely in part on the fact that the United States is hands off in, in that sense, right? And some people get confused by that. They'll hear some of the some of the positive statements that will come out of the administration when it comes to Israel's defense. But unfortunately, on the ground, we are seeing Hezbollah in the north. I was just with uh, an IDF uh, soldier the other day at an event we had in New York, and he was saying how they, they're obviously operating in Gaza, yeah. and there's already the talk about what's going on in Lebanon, right? And so Israel, as you've said, my friend, the ring of fire, right? The that fire, fire is only intensifying, and we can see it's because, in large part, they see that America, its yeah. administration, is not really engaged as it should be. But we've got this perception, and as you mentioned, Dumasani, the Biden administration says, look, there's no daylight, but Ilan, it seems that in the region especially, even among our Sunni Arab allies, there's a perception of daylight, of some distance between the U.S. and Israel right now. Why is that so dangerous, not only for Israel, but for America? Well, it's dangerous for America, Eric, because when we don't stand with our allies against what is without question an unadulterated evil, we weaken the march of godliness in our world. We weaken Western civilization. And ultimately, we make Americans less safe, less safe right here at home. Mm. And so it's absolutely critical that when you're talking about terrorism, my goodness, look, we, we suffered 9-11. And Hezbollah, you mentioned Hezbollah, one of the most dangerous terrorist forces in the world. We need to stand with our allies unequivocally. We need to give them whatever they need yeah. to prevail in this war. And that war is not only against Hamas in the south, mm. but, but the northern border of Israel is a, is a hot war zone. With, yeah. with Hezbollah regularly uh, shooting, f firing anti-tank rockets, and there's drone uh, infiltration into northern Israel. People being killed, People Israelis being, being killed. killed, and some 60,000 at least Israelis evacuated from their homes in the north. Think about that. The entire yeah. northern part of Israel evacuated. People are displaced, refugees yeah. in the Jewish homeland, Jewish refugees yeah. who are staying in hotels and on couches in <laughs> other people's houses. Same with the so southern Israel. It's intolerable, it's immoral, and the United States has to, has to stand 100% with Israel because no country on earth can be expected to withstand that kind of, uh, wow. that kind of uh, warfare yeah. against its citizens. Uh, Dumasani, the International Criminal Court, ICC for short, now last week they announced, and this is a global court, right. they <laughs> announced that they are seeking an arrest warrant mm -hmm for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Israel's Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, yes. and yet the Supreme Leader of Iran, the leader of North Korea, the list goes on, Xi Jinping in China, no arrest warrants for them. Right. Right. Uh, what were your thoughts when you saw that, and how troubling is that? This is a, a global court, a global body, really coming at Israel in an unprecedented way. Once again, Eric, the same thing. The, it is Israel's enemies, even the ICC, being emboldened by an America, that is not standing with Israel. One of the first things that came to my mind when I saw that, go back three or four years ago, Ilhan Omar was challenging President Biden at that time, yeah. earlier in his administration, to sanction Israel being dragged before the ICC, right? Yeah. Our organization wrote pieces about it, people writing pieces about it. Fast forward to now, it's happening, right? It's actually, they're actually <laughs> issuing arrest warrants. Yeah. We, we see that direct connection. Why are they feeling so emboldened to slander Israel, uh, to, like you said, call for uh, Netanyahu to be arrested. He have slaughtering happen in Sudan, slaughtering happen in Nigeria. Yeah. We're not going to talk about that, right? We're going to actually come against the leader of a democratic Israel that's fighting an existential war as yeah. if they started the war and all of those things. So it's just, yeah. it's amazing what's going on. Here. Elon, great point. Uh, I, I don't want to say Israel were the victims on October 7th because Israelis are any, anything but victims, including the IDF, of course. But look, Elon, Israel was attacked on October 7th mm -hmm. and on October 8th by Hezbollah, by the way. Yet Israel is being painted as the aggressor. It, it really seems to me to be a world upside down. 
It's a world morally upside down, which is why <clears throat> your moral clarity is so important. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but we have to be morally clear. The United States has to lead. Let me give you one example. Uh, you just talked about this ICC <clears throat> decision to, to go after Israeli leaders. Imagine that, a democracy. Well, I call on President Biden to rescind his executive mm -hmm. order from two years ago. Mm -hmm. That executive order prevents the United States from sanctioning the ICC when it drags our allies into, into criminal prosecution, but also when it drags Americans, when it drags Americans into criminal prosecution. We had a, an executive order on the books that could sanction the ICC. President Biden withdrew that through another executive order. So I call upon him to do the right thing. His rhetoric was great. He, he, uh, mm -hmm. he condemned the ICC. Yeah. Now let's, mm -hmm. let's give it teeth and let's start sanctioning yeah. them. Elon, I think that's the key, turning <laughs> the words into action. Teeth, give it teeth. Yeah. Uh, great point there. You both have done such great work on the rise of anti-Semitism. I think we see it manifested at the ICC, by the way, mm -hmm. but you've done such great work on the rise of anti-Semitism. Both of you, what has been your reaction, and Dumasani, we'll start with you, then you, Elon, <clears throat> to what's unfolded, the visceral gut reaction I've had to what's unfolded on American college campuses and in American cities and in European cities as well since October 7th, to me, uh, we've crossed a threshold here. And, and we were talking during the break, guys, this is it's a spiritual battle. This is evil on the march, it seems. Yes, it, it, that's what makes it sometimes so difficult for some to identify, Eric. You obviously have the political things that are going on, the propaganda, but there is a spiritual root to what's actually happening, right? Yeah. So you have students, and some of them people know aren't actually students, they're just agitators on those yeah. campuses, right? But from the West Coast, from UCLA to NYU, right? You have not just this rabid support for Hamas, but hatred yeah. for Jews. Jews are being attacked, uh, targeted on those campuses. Like it's 1950 Selma, Alabama. You can't yeah. access certain parts of the school. It's amazing what's going on and the people who have been deceived spiritually into thinking that somehow they're fighting a just cause or fighting yeah. against injustice. They're doing the exact opposite of what they think they're doing. So true. And Elon, you were the government's <laughs> point man under the Trump administration on combating anti-Semitism. No one knows the world's oldest hatred, sadly, better than you do. We're seeing something, a wave here, that we haven't seen really since the 1930s, it seems, since World War II. It's, it's that bad. Well, there's a war against the Jews, a kinetic war in the Middle East against the Jewish state, but a war right here at home as well in the most important places where we educate our kids, in our schools, on our campuses, institutions. Ivy League. Co correct, the most institutions <laughs> to which we entrust, right, our yes. most precious assets our children future leaders the future leaders of america and there's a war against the very legitimacy and place in america for the jewish people this makes very clear what we've said all along hatred of the jewish state is hatred of the jewish people yes. anti-zionism is anti-semitism uh, secretary of state mike pompeo uh, made that point announced it publicly yeah. at an apac policy conference that's the case Jew hatred is Jew hatred. We have to fight it everywhere. When it's directed against Israel, when it's directed against right. kids in, in, in school or on campus, and yeah. in world bodies, when world bodies, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. attempt to deny mm -hmm. one country in the world, mm -hmm. only one, the right to defend itself yeah. against genocidal killers. Only one country doesn't have that right. Sure. That's the Jewish state. It's outrageous, and we need to put a stop to it. Yes, evil is on the march, and yet there is good. There's good at this table right now mm -hmm. with this panel, no doubt, and moral clarity. And we're seeing the Israeli-American Council, Elon, your organization leading counter protests mm -hmm. at American universities. Tell us more about that. From coast to coast, from UCLA to MIT, also Columbia, and everywhere in between, we've turned out thousands upon thousands of good patriotic Americans. And patriotism is the key because the other side hates America too. Let's remember, it's not only, it's not only hatred of Jews, it's hatred of America. Patriotic Americans, Jews and Christians, have turned out by the thousands. And we're so proud at IAC to have led this across the country. And what one student um, at UCLA, another at Columbia, and professors have told me, we so desperately needed these rallies because solidarity it's a hug. It shows we, we're with you. We love you. You're not alone. Don't think you're alone. Because the fact of the matter is most Americans, most Americans are decent, good, God-fearing people. And they're looking at this on campuses and they're disgusted. Yes. They're revolted by this. And you know what? 
We, this is a time for us to take, this, to take our campuses back, mm -hmm. to take our streets back, mm -hmm. and to turn mm -hmm. this whole conflict around. Yeah, shifting gears real quick, I want to return to that pointy line with you, Dumasani, in a second. I mentioned before the break <laughs> Iran's nuclear program. I don't want to forget about that before we wrap tonight. Mm -hmm. That issue continues to loom large, gentlemen. We're mm -hmm. talking Hamas, Hezbollah, but uh, the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, said just this week that Iran continues to enrich, to enrich very dangerous levels yeah. of uranium. Mm -hmm. Ilan, you worked, obviously, high levels in the U.S. government under the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. How concerned should we be about Iran's... We're talking about anti-Semitism. Iran is, is the main hub in the world, that regime, mm -hmm. and potentially having weapons which could destroy the world's one and only Jewish state. We should not be able to sleep at night. And that's not hyperbole. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine, I mean, look, we see what's happening in the world. We see what Iran is doing today with its proxies and directly, direct attack on Israel. Right. Now just imagine that crazy genocidal regime yeah. with nuclear weapons capabilities. Could you imagine? By the way, it's not only Israel. We have an Iranian proxy, the Houthis, shooting at US naval vessels. U.S. naval vessels they're shooting at. Can you imagine yeah. how emboldened this axis of evil would be mm -hmm. if there are nuclear weapons involved? It must not happen. The United yeah. States needs to do everything, everything possible, including military action, to prevent the Iranian Republic of Iran yeah. from going nuclear. Amen. And Ilan, look, Israel is the first line of defense for Western <laughs> civilization. It's never been more clear. And by the way, gentlemen, the Israeli Mossad just said this morning that Iran is working with criminal gangs in Europe to target Israeli embassies. So we see the reach of Iran again beyond just the Middle East and into the West, into Europe, into the United States. Yes. Dumasani, I want to dig a little bit more into the spiritual root of all this. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it seems to me to be an absolute obsession right. for the Iranian regime, for Hamas, for Hezbollah. Right. They, they don't stop. They continue with just this absolute demonic obsession with Israel. Israel is the size of the state of New Jersey. Hmm. The Jewish people make up less than 1% of the world's total population. Yes, and yet, yes, Israel is targeted with just an incredible, unholy obsession. Yes, Can you talk more about the motivations behind this. What's amazing is that the scriptures bear all of this out. We just had a meeting with our pastors. We do a once a month kind of a, a Zoom call with them. And among the scriptures we talked about, gentlemen, was Psalm 83, right? In which the psalmist is asking for God's help because not only are the enemies coming after Israel because they want to come after God, he makes that direct correlation. They hate you, so they hate us, right? Yeah. So then he says they've formed a confederacy. They've come together. They've actually, he's talking about where there's, here you have the Sunnis and the Shia, right? Yeah. You, you, have, you have these different groups that are, that are religiously opposed to each other, but they agree on hating Israel, right? And so we recognize that that is a spiritual root so now we see these different groups who, again, don't like each other, would war against each other if Israel weren't in the middle, right? But Israel's in the middle, and they're actually being driven by that, as our Jewish friends would say, the spirit of Amalek, right? This hatred of Israel, the dis destruction yeah. of the Jewish people, and the people who think that it's some sort of, and, and I'll say this last thing, Eric, here in the States, and we're watching this bitter divide, even unfortunately some who consider themselves conservative Christians, who are also jumping on the anti-Israel bandwagon, not realizing that they're being part of that same group spiritually that's coming against Israel yes. for nothing justified, right? And if they're talking about the war in Gaza, they, they too will ignore what Hamas did and yes. focus on Israel and Jews. It's amazing. It's spiritually it's what's being driven, and people have to realize that first and foremost. Yeah, and Ilan, you know this so well. We have about 40 seconds left. Look, the one force that seems to unite the, the radical neo-Nazi right, the far left and radical Islam, is hatred of Jews. That's exactly right. And that's because, like the scriptures say with Amalek, the, the, the ultimate anti-Semite, Amalek does not fear God. That's yes. what it says about Amalek. Throughout history, the, the ch humanity's chief manifestation of ungodliness and evil has been Jew hatred. Yeah. And that's why this fight is not only about protecting Jews or, or protecting the Jewish state, it's about protecting our civilization. Yes, it's yes. about ensuring decency. So for those who say, well, I care about the human condition, you care about the human condition, mm -hmm. fight anti-Semitism. You want to elevate yeah. humanity, fight this evil of Jew hatred that not only leaves Jews in ruin, but leaves entire continents in ruin. Yeah. We can't let that happen today. And that's why we've got to fight this, this axis of evil around the world. Dumasani, some quick final thoughts on how Israel's fight is all of our fight. 
uh, again, you said the front line, I've heard our Jewish friends say the canary in the coal mine, all of those things are true, right? So what we see being targeted in terms of our Jewish brothers and sisters will eventually come for everyone, right? And what has happened, our organization has joined, has been a part of what's called the African Jewish Alliance, and it is a group of African nationals as well as Israeli Jews and American Jews who have the shared experiences of radicalism, how they've devastated their communities, yeah. right? Uh, we say often in that organization that and October 7th sadly happens every week in Sudan, happens yeah. every week in Nigeria, right? They've come together to bring awareness to that, to our government here, the most powerful government, obviously, the United States, yeah. but around the world as well, so that we can let people know Boko Haram is Hamas, is ISIS, is Hezbollah, is Al-Shabaab, that radical mindset, which yeah. is killing Christians, Jews, and Muslims. We're saying many Muslims are losing their lives who are not aligned with that radical ideology. So what people know they can be a part of that as well. Yeah, Ilan, about 30 seconds. You've dedicated your life to fighting this virus of anti-Semitism. Final thoughts. You see what's happening in Israel. You see what's happening on our campuses. And you can throw up your hands and say, how, how, can, we, how can we beat this? Yeah. Let me tell you something. What you said in the beginning, God is enthroned on high, and what God expects is for decent, God-loving people to unite. The most powerful force in the world is the unity of spiritually decent people, Jews, Christians, and the Muslims you mentioned, mm -hmm. who are decent. You, we come together and fight this. Let me tell you, our enemies don't stand a chance, and together we will build that better future that our children deserve. Amen. Ilan, well said. God is in control. Amen, gentlemen. Dumasani, Ilan, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Until tomorrow night, God bless you. We'll see you soon.